For 13 years, this community lived in fear. Four bodies and counting. Police are worried they have a serial killer on the loose. After four bodies wrapped in burlap were dumped in a marshy area along this Long Island beach in 2010. The bodies all found within a quarter mile of each other. Everyone's going to have to go. But the case went cold, and the so-called Gilgo Beach serial killer remained on the loose. For the next 13 years, their cases went unsolved. Until today. Rex, did you do it? But last week, that changed. Police arresting a suburban dad, an architect, charging him with murdering women authorities say he secretly solicited for sex. Prosecutors say 59-year-old Rex Hewerman, a New York City architect and father of two, killed three women, Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. And he's now the prime suspect in the death of a fourth, Maureen Brainerd Barnes. The women in their 20s, petite, sex workers. She didn't deserve this just like nobody else's mother or sister or daughter deserves this. She really was a fabulous person, just lost in life. Hewerman was taken into custody at 8.30 p.m. Thursday outside his Fifth Avenue architecture firm in Manhattan. Detectives spent the weekend pulling evidence from his home, including trash bags and a filing cabinet. Prosecutors say Hewerman had 92 gun permits and more than 200 guns, some of the weapons seen in this DailyMail.com photo. How concerning is that, that he had that kind of an arsenal? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's, it was concerning and concerning enough where we didn't want to have the arrest at the house. We wanted to take him um, into custody somewhere outs outside of the house because of access to those weapons. Prosecutors also say Hewerman was living a double life. The public saw a father and architect who commuted into New York City. Serial offenders, they are able to lure, kidnap, torture, kill, dismember a victim turn around an hour later, be at home, make breakfast for their kids, make breakfast for their wife. I'm an architectural consultant. I'm a troubleshooter, born and raised on Long Island. How are you doing? Good to see you. Hewerman appearing in this YouTube video a year ago. Around the time, investigators formed a new task force and began to suspect he could be a killer, saying they zeroed in on him using DNA technology, his car, and cell phone data. Prosecutors said the killer contacted his victims using burner phones and later took the victim's cell phones. Those cell phone records narrowed the area where the suspect could be, tracking them to locations near his office in Midtown Manhattan and Hewerman's home in Massapequa Park. Detectives then looked to see who in that area owned a distinctive vehicle allegedly tied to one of the murders, a Chevrolet Avalanche, reducing the pool of possible suspects from thousands to dozens. This trash can outside the office is where police say they then found pizza crust they used to take a DNA sample, matching it to DNA from a hair found on one of the victims. By the time the FBI and, and the Suffolk County Police uh, were attempting to get DNA, they were on to their guy, but they needed his DNA. So that's why they formed a surveillance team and basically fouled him until he ultimately ate something uh, and then threw it into a public trash can and they grabbed it at that point. Prosecutors say eyewitnesses gave them a description of Hewerman. He's a big guy. He was described as a 6'4", 6 6'6", uh, you, know, you know, 250, 250 plus pounds, and just not a, 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 like a muscle-bound person, but just a very large human being, and that's, you know, that, that's who he is. You use the word ogre in court. Yeah, uh, well, that was one of the witnesses uh, uh, used, uh, utilized that term, ogre, uh, meaning a very thick, uh, you know, thick-framed individual. Court documents reveal he allegedly used fake names to sign up for multiple emails, which he used to search for sex workers, child and torture pornography, and he even had a Tinder profile looking for dates or hookups. Hewerman also allegedly searched, why hasn't the Long Island serial killer been caught? and Long Island serial killer update. In a statement, Hewerman's defense attorney said, Rex Hewerman is a loving husband and dedicated father. He has entered a not guilty plea and has insisted he did not commit these crimes. Nothing would suggest he is involved in these incidents. Once we, we establish him as a suspect at March, uh, March 14th of 2022, the case started to really go fast. And then it just kept on getting faster and faster and faster, culminating in, in you know, the, the end of the, the, of the grand jury and the, and the takedown. 
In the town of Massapequa Park, where Hewerman lives, neighbors were uncomfortable around his home. We saw this guy just standing there chopping wood, you know, looking very strange. And um, we made a joke. We were like, this guy's definitely a serial killer, you know, because you know, <laughs> he looks like a serial killer. James Pagano went to school with Hewerman. Well, <laughs> he had a nickname, which everybody probably gets a nickname in high school, but his was Herman Munster because he was so big. Dominique Vidal said she was recently in a networking group with Hewerman when the topic of podcasts and true crime came up. He asked me if I knew about the Gilgo Beach murders. She says he left her a voicemail in February. Hey, this is Rex. Sharing it with our station, WABC. I had a question for you. Um, I also wanted to touch base. Hope you're doing good. Hope to talk to you soon. The Gilgo Beach murders became a source of morbid fascination. We don't have law enforcement agencies working together. There is nobody trying to connect the dots. You know, it's human nature to want to know what's going on and to delve into the darkest parts of humanity. Josh Zeman is the director of The Killing Season, an A&E documentary series on the murders. There was always the idea that he was a commuter. Uh, the first uh, victim, Maureen Brainer Barnes, disappeared from Penn Station. Uh, a lot of the, the cell phone pings came from Massapequa. Another victim was last seen going to Massapequa. So we knew that Massapequa was an important point. We also knew that Penn Station was an important point. And if you know Long Island from Long Island, you know it's, it's a commuter. A total of 10 bodies were found at Gilgo Beach. Some of them remain unidentified. Megan Waterman was one of the victims who was identified. And the arrest was bittersweet for her family, her sister told our Portland, Maine affiliate, WMTW. Now I put the face to the details of the death, so I don't necessarily like having that closure, but it is such a relief that we do know who it was and that it will come to an end eventually. The investigation is really just beginning. Police now have entered Hewerman's DNA into a statewide database as they check to see if he's a link to any other unsolved murders. Hewerman is being held without bail, and we've learned he's on suicide watch. But for the loved ones of the victims, there is also compassion for the young women caught up in the sex industry. Thank God that the narrative has changed. Nothing was going to change for these women in the industry if the narrative hadn't changed. They are a victim. Nobody wants to be doing what she was doing. She didn't seek doing that. She was a vulnerable naive drug addict girl who was very easily influenced by this monster of a man. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.